<laughs> okay, so Ephesians 5, how many of you guys remember what the word redeem means? To retrieve. To retrieve, what else? In your own words, what does it mean to redeem something? Bought. Bought. Okay, what else? To re re accept, receive. Restore. Restore, what else? Cash in. Cash in, yeah, okay. Like another is like to buy back, yes. right? Yeah. Or to get back, right? Like to redeem like a jewelry that you pawned or something like that. Did they say loan? Is, it how, is, that, how, is that how you guys call it here? I know in the Philippines we say pawn. Yes. Same. Okay. So you pawn it. So, so in a pawn shop, right? Like you redeem something, um, because it's been owned by something else, right? That's exactly what that means. So in order to redeem, one of the things that we talked about last week was that we would be aware that something has been lost. And so we talked about the seven areas. I did edit this file because last week I had a double on one of the points. Um, so I, this is the correct one now that I sent to you guys, but there are seven things that we were taking inventory. And this is where we're going to focus on today um, on how has, so the two questions that are on the right side. And so there's seven, right? So we talked about, I'm just going to review for a little bit. Um, so all of these seven points are, what do you call it? Like different areas of our lives that cover pretty much like all right, that you experience in your life. So our faith walk, which is our spiritual walk, and not just our, not just like, okay, what is, are we saved or not, whatever, but it's more of like the health of your walk with Christ, right? If you obviously are not saved, then you don't have a health yet because you're not even born, right? You haven't been born. So when you're a born again Christian, you now have a spiritual health to take care of, right? And, and nurture, um relationships this includes family friends and relationships that we have whether it's at work or anything that the lord brings it to our um to our lives so the next one is service and work which is our career and job stewardship is about finances wellness um talks about physical emotional and mental health um passions or dreams and desires and dwelling and i added this part uh the place you call home and some of us here it could be just our bedroom right like not necessarily like the whole place or could be the whole place but more specifically um for wherever you are i would say dwelling right at the moment so with these things what i was asking everyone last week was the are these two questions that i want us to take inventory of and i know we talked about this in uh, worship team devotions a few weeks ago, I think it was Kim Marlin sharing, where he talked about like taking inventory of, of our lives, you know, and, and one example is like, when I came back from vacation, the first thing that I had to do at work was um, basically take inventory, you know, take inventory of the things that are needed, you know, how can we continue to operate? If we don't have bananas, we can't, make banana bread, right? Like if we don't have, um, right? Like if we don't have the supplies that we need, like right now we're out of mocha, but it's coming tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> all right. So like, but see, the thing is like, those might be like very specific items, but because you take inventory of it, I will know, right? Like you'll know it exactly. Yeah. And so the point of us going through this, this is why like, it's going to take time, but what I want us to focus on tonight is to, I would say like open up the conversation, um, all of us together and also like in maybe smaller groups to share if anyone has any thoughts about it or anything that you guys have um, maybe thought through the past couple of weeks. Like the two questions are, how has the enemy taken a hold of the following areas? Right. So think about those two things. Like, so if I were to, I should, I could have given you guys like something to write on, but I'm going to leave it to you on how you want to do this. Cause some of you guys like digital and some of you guys like paper. So I would just say like, I would categorize it in, in put one column, like all the stuff like faith, walk, relationship, service, work, stewardship. The second column I would put like, how has the enemy taken a hold of these things? And then just write down what comes to mind first. And we kind of did this last week. And then the next thing, the second part of that, another column is like, how is God calling me to redeem these areas? Because if you think about it, let me just pick like finances, stewardship. How has the enemy taken a hold of stewardship in your life? 
right? So, and again, finances is, you know, it's a two-edged sword because there is a responsibility on our part and there is a responsibility with God, right? Of, of course about it. What about our work? You know, how has the enemy taken a hold of that area? Our relationships, our faith walk, our wellness, for example, our passions, you know, some of us here have passions that are, have been untouched. Why? Because we not, we don't, we just kind of allow the enemy to take, take it from us, you know, and, and God may be calling us to redeem those areas. And I think it, until, you know, it has been taken away from you, you don't know what you're going to redeem. <clears throat> you don't know what you need to take back. And so identifying the, these areas is really important. And I think that sometimes in the spiritual side of things is that we think that like, um, the we're good, right? Like we're, you know, we're living, we're, we're like, we're not dying or anything like that. Right. And we're, we're being provided for, we eat good, you know, we have leftovers. And, and even though sometimes you don't, you may not like your leftovers, you still got food, you know, right. in comparison to like the rest of the world. Right. But if you think about that, like God can give us more than just what sometimes we give ourselves, you know what I mean? Like, and, and more, more importantly in the areas of us redeeming those. And so, so those two questions. So I want to hear from you guys when it comes to this, because this specific verse really is talking about, it says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. How many of us know we're supposed to exercise? Raise your hand. We know, right? How many of you guys know of exercise programs? Right. Okay. Or like workouts or whatever it is that you're, even if it just means walking, yeah, anything. But how many of us know that it's good for us to work out? How many of us work out? <laughs> right. So this is in the area of wellness. Correct. And so what I'm saying is it says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. And I, God has been re not, not revealing, but almost like reminding it to me. Like when we were on vacation, we don't have internet, which is kind of cool. Um, you were forced to like, just reflect, think about things, you know, and, and you can't really like browse because you have one bar and you're just like waiting and like, Oh, the message sent, you know, <laughs> like it was, it was cool. And at the same time for people in LA, it's almost just like, um, a struggle to not be able to see what's on Instagram, for example, as, as dumb as that. Right. But, um, if you think about it, like, we know that knowledge is something that we all have. We are not lack of knowledge. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. We are not lack of knowledge on the Lord. Right. How about like our Bibles? That's the first thing. Pastors teaching every Sunday, pastors teaching every Wednesday. Like we are not lack of knowledge on what we need to do in life and how to live wise in wisdom. But to actually walk in wisdom is a different thing, right? Because we know that because it's kind of like, I remember when I was a kid in, in elementary school, um, the te I think I said this last week, right? Like when the teacher would say like, okay, guys, this is how you're going to do, this is our assignment. And I literally would look around and, and see everyone looking around to find out what, how to do it. It's the how, right? Like, how do I do that? How do I do that? How do I get to um, a point of actually doing that because a lot of us already know, but the knowing part of it is lacking, right? It's the lacking part of it. That's why you don't take action. Why? Because we don't know how. Does that make sense? And um, and so with that, like this is what God is calling us in these seven areas that I believe as we take the time to take inventory. And, and the only thing is I won't be able to answer it for you. Only you can answer it for you. No one else in this room can answer it for you. Only you can, because you will know your life and you know, like, sure, maybe your spouse can say something or your son or your daughter or whatever, or like you, you might be able to provide some insight, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be you and God, right? Like when we stand in judgment before God, we ain't, we ain't going to be holding hands with each other and say, look, God, it's going to be me and God. That is the judgment that God is going to do. Right. And so therefore we take inventory for ourselves and, and how God 
is working in us and what what that means to redeem all these times. So let's put this into action, folks. Let's let's go ahead and whatever devices you have and whatever opportunities that are utensils, writing utensils you have to be able to do this. Um, first of all, does anybody have any comment or any like insight? Insight. Insight. Oh. Okay, well, for me personally, when I was when you when you gave this to us last week, I already had like things clicked right away. Mm. Like, for me, it was obvious, mm. right? And it's not that the others are not important, but the weight of the need right now. Talking about how has the enemy taken hold of the following areas? Right. I believe these are the following areas that the enemy really has taken hold of, mm. and that's the middle four. Mm. And they overlap for me. The middle four. Oh, middle four. So the first one is. First one is service mm. or work. The career or job as a pastor. Like, sure. There's a question that lingers in my mind. Am I doing it right? Am I, am I maximizing this thing? Because, of course, we don't we don't go by the numbers, but the world looks at the numbers, and and it behooves us to ask if the numbers are are small. Is it because God wants it to be that way, or is it because I failed to do my job? So that's a lingering question that you have, especially when you're not seeing the results that you feel like you want to see. So there's a challenge there. Am I doing it right? Is the enemy doing this against me? And the next one, it affects it. Finance. You don't have anybody in the church. You struggle financially. And as a father of the family, as a husband, uh, you know that it's being stolen from you. Like your responsibility is to provide for your house. So. So it's there's really a disturbance of peace, it, it, the inner peace, when you know that you're not functioning mm. as much as you should. You know we're still making it, but you know it's like it's 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 like at the end of the thread. You know, like that's the financial part of it. Um, and the enemy has taken all of that area um, without my knowledge about why. Mm. You know, um, people left. I'm, I'm telling you, people left the church. And I don't know why they left the church except for a few, mm. but a lot of them did without telling us why, mm. you know, and don't want to tell us why. But that's the part that I know the enemy is working on, not necessarily probably in us, but probably other people that he's able to attack that important area. And then the next one is wellness. You all know what's going on, right? Um, and the, way I, the, the way I see wellness, it, it also includes like personal development. Mm. You know, like, is there still something in, in my personality that could grow? Aside from the physical aspect, emotional, mental, mental aspect of it. Can I still grow as a person that could still affect a lot of, like, the passions and dreams and desires? It's like, I'm, my prayer is that my life will affect, of course, number one, like, the immediate family. And I know I've done that for so many years already. To affect as many more people that I can without violating my first call. Mm -hmm. But being faithful to the call, can I still reach a lot more people and in, influence a lot more people, impact a lot more people? And I'm feeling, I'm feeling that it's so constricted, <coughs> you know. But uh, how is God calling me to redeem these areas? I, I, what I'm doing, I believe God's wanting me to like really look into the possibility that with what I'm doing, because it may be that I'm not doing enough. It may be that I am doing what I have to do, except that I have not seen the doors of opportunities that may be there. They could be open. You don't have to add a lot more time, but you just have to open these doors that I haven't mm -hmm. tried. Mm -hmm. Probably because I fear I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. I feel like the imposter syndrome that we mm -hmm. talk about. I feel like it's too hard for me when, when you're already doing it. You mm -hmm. know, so so that's it. I think God's calling me in the areas of just opening doors and without fear, try doing what I've been doing, but it but just other doors, mm. other doors, and so I don't have to like do. I should not fear doing right you know, because something new you fear. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think that's the way God's been doing it for me. Awesome. Because you were talking last week, or like my mind was already working. Mm. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing. <clears throat> awesome. Those are good. And I think, again, that's something that only pastor knows for himself, right? And I think 
for us, what would it be for us? And so does anybody else have something similar that pastor maybe like one or two things that you feel like you want to share to the group briefly? Well, when I was first prompted with the question, I kind of thought about number three, which is service work and specifically career and job, because for me personally, I was, uh, just to give you backstory, I was hanging out with my friend, uh, Stockton and Kelly, and Kelly used to work in the industry, and he kind of said something that struck me, is at a certain point, he had to like, kind of like leave the industry to pursue a different career because he was a sound mixer and he was just struggling. He realized that a part of his identity was him being a sound mixer. Mm -hmm. So when he had to like make this life changing decision, he had to like go to therapy and all this stuff because he didn't realize that a part of his identity was attached to that. Mm -hmm. And I, I started thinking about it and with the strike being slow, I feel like the enemy is kind of using that because I haven't been getting a lot of gigs because of just the nature of the industry. And it's also kind of like discouraged me too because I haven't even, since I'm like depressed about how things are, I haven't really been networking or even like maybe trying as hard as I could. So I feel like the enemy kind of capitalized on the fact that like it's not going well. So I was feeling like sad about it. And then I kind of just like, was just I kind of challenging myself that of course I still want to pursue this because it is my dream but I want to challenge myself too because it's when he prompted me with that statement I was like to a degree a part of my identity is also in my career as a AC but that's not true because my identity ultimately is in Christ so I have to yeah. remind myself of that that even if you were to potentially redirect me, my identity isn't linked to my career. And I just feel like probably, uh, or not probably, but the Lord wants me to redeem that and redeem just like my career and job and just get motivated and start networking again and not really like give into the depression, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can also talk about three as well. Um, I mean, I talk about everyone, but I'll, I'll, I'll target three, but basically, uh, for me, I think it's really, I, I think it's somewhat easy, um, maybe more easier to identify something that the enemy's taken a hold of mm. in an area of your life when it's, when it's seemed bad or it's, it's, it's seen in a more negative aspect. But for me, um, I think that, uh, and for some reason I'm thinking about the, uh, the quote, like, um, familiarity breeds contentment mm. and like so for me it's like i i'm in a place in my life right now where st having a job still um uh, mm. being i mean i'm gonna I'll, I'll be celebrating my um eighth year at the company this wow. year in, in wow. september and um so for me looking back you know in my past years like um yeah this i i i don't really see this as my career. Like, I, I mean, yeah, working in the film industry is is what I ultimately want it, want to do and want to be in. Um, but for me, I do see it see it as a job. And I'm now I I I mean, I've noticed for a while now that I've been just so comfortable having this job, getting a paycheck every two every two weeks, and just um you know and and just like going on with the ebbs and flow of life. Um, you know, just recently being married, going on this family trip, things like that, while neglecting my passion, which is filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used, and I, and I'm thinking back to like a lot of the times where um, I would spend my weekends, or I would spend the, you know, or whatever, my free time um, working on my own passion projects and things that I'm, I'm, you know, passionate about, like making making films with Maddie or mm -hmm. with friends, and and. I haven't done that in a while, and mm -hmm. I, I feel like something that the enemy has taken hold of is really just my passion for that by distracting me with something, something that would be deemed as good, which is having a job, but at the same time, just being um, so comfortable in that, in that I'm not pursuing and I'm not pursuing my dream, which is to, which is to create films, which is to create art, and. Um, 
So I think like, yeah, again, like kind of what Maddie was saying, like uh, I, I think like it's, it's um, a way to um, redeem that is to really just um, get uncomfortable. Not, I'm not obviously that doesn't mean to quit my job, but to, to really evaluate my time, evaluate my free time and, and, and what I could be doing to pursue my, pursue my dream, pursue my passion, which is filmmaking, which is um, creating art um, to, you know, um, whether it be like projects to um, show my faith in, in, through video or through, through, through things like that, but really just um, um, get going with my, you know, get going with my passion of filmmaking mm -hmm. rather than just being comfortable where I'm at and just going through the ebbs and flow of life of, of going to my job Monday through Friday and then, you know, relaxing and spending my time doing whatever whatever I am doing right now. So, yeah. Awesome. Great. I think there's a lot more that we can talk about this. I know maybe some of you guys are on Zoom, um, might have some things to share also, but we are losing time again. It's only like <laughs> maybe next week we're going to do like uh, 45 minutes of, of this, like just taking time. But I would also encourage us in the, in the last couple of minutes that we have left is this is going to be, I would say, like, give it time. Like, give it time to really go through each one of these things, you know? And I'm going to close with this, like, our faith walk. Like, how is, I want us to put ourselves at, like, we always hear this, right? Like, oh, we always constantly blame the enemy when you're just, like, hungry or, like, something like that, right? Or, like, you're, you're blaming the enemy for your lack of, um, you know, for your, what is it, like, were you getting angry, but you were really hangry. <laughs> like you were just really hungry. If you would just eat a little bit, right. maybe you would actually like think better, you know, because at least that happened to me the other day. I'm like, if I would just eat, I probably would like not be so distracted because I'm so hungry, but I'll just like take time to do that. Right. So I think I want us to think about these things in twofold that like it can be our risk. What is our responsibility? Right. Maybe that's another question that I maybe I could have added on there. Like, how is the enemy? Because when we redeem something, what is my first and foremost, my responsibility when it comes to this? Because God has given us wisdom. Right. Isn't that true? God has given us the ability to to um, to do what we need to do. And he's given us the way it's like this is the way walking it. Right. Like we know that. But um, again, knowing that and doing that is completely two different things. And a lot of times, like we just know it, but we don't actually do it. And part of that is maybe we don't know how. Maybe you need help. Maybe you need to ask someone to keep you accountable. Or maybe you need to, to say like, hey, want to ask me more questions about this so that way I can pry into it. Maybe you need to start writing down and journaling more because that actually does bring a lot of, if you brain dump things, like without anything, just type whatever comes out you know, that actually starts to bring in some clarity um, and go through each of these, because I think that the more we do that, so category, another category, and we can add this is like, what is my responsibility when it comes to this? You know, is it just making 10 minutes of my time and reading God's word, you know, reading God's word and then like, whatever, it could be as simple as like the moment I wake up, I'm going to pray, you know, like it could be as simple as that. Like the moment I, you know, before I, I leave work, like I'm going to pray before I drive or something, a simple habit like that, right. Can, can have more impact. And so then the next thing is if I've done my responsibility and whatever those things might be that at least I know of, because we might have some responsibility that we know of and there are responsibilities that we probably are not aware of. Right. And so now we say like, okay, is the enemy actually attacking that area and i want us to also be re real about it because because there are going to be areas where we know for sure the enemy is is what is it what is the question again um has the enemy taken a hold of that area right don't blame the enemy for something we're doing ourselves okay <laughs> but right. and blame the enemy for the things he's actually doing and this is where we take our authority in christ right in this area and so then the next thing is, how is God calling me to redeem these areas? What is one step that I can do? And if you notice, like in the example that pastor gave, all of the things that he said was connected. Did you notice how connected it was because of, of the, the job, then the stewardship, the financial aspect is really, is um, affected. And then his physical is affected. Like they're all, con all kind of like working together. Um, and that's how the enemy works sometimes, right? Like he tries to pick a thing and then he kind of like weaves everything else, you know, to be a part of that. So, um, as we take 
inventory of these things. Like maybe for the next seven days, do one day, one thing a day, right? As simple as that. Just do one thing a day. And if you don't put it in the calendar, if you don't make time for it, it's not going to happen. So if you decide, when am I going to take inventory of this? Maybe on my devotion time, I'll spend 10 minutes or five minutes of evaluating my faith walk with the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Just, you know, if you could do that or in then day two, is it relationships? And then day three, you know, if you would take that time and <laughs> the business coach was telling me, he's like, if you don't make time there, the, those modules are not going to do itself. It's like, you have to decide when you're going to do it. Because if you're not going to decide when you're going to do it, you ain't going to, it's not going to happen for you, mm-hmm. you know? So we have to decide when we're going to do it. That way it will happen for us. That way we'll know. Otherwise we're going to be living in limbo because we were not aware of what the enemy has been stealing this entire time. Amen. amen. So amen. let's be aware of that. So that's my cue for, uh, we're closing now, Pastor. Yeah. And then the last one comment. Yes. If, if the Lord is pressing something very heavily on us already. Mm. Mm-hmm. We don't have to wait for another one. Yeah. We don't have to wait for another Post one. It. Start it. So do it already, especially if the Lord's speaking it very clear. Yes. Right. Well, we have to do the first step that we have to do. Made up the whole thing. The Lord's <laughs> pressing in something here that's really, really heavy and that you we need to do something about. Let's do it already. Yeah, and I, that's that's a good reminder too. I was thinking earlier that like it could be that God is just highlighting one particular thing right now like one particular thing that you might need to take care of immediately right and then we can share that next week yeah yeah share that next week so don't worry about not having all the answers by next week um and then i want to have more discussion time with you guys yeah and and always remember that delayed obedience is still disobedience Uh (laughs) uh-huh what amen right good reminder (laughs) okay awesome all right. Well, we're done. We're going to close in a word of prayer. Okay. <laughs> we're going to close this. Recording stop. Okay. Okay. <laughs>